I wanted to make a video comparing and contrasting the manga and anime for Chainsaw Man to find the strengths of each and discuss which one did certain things better than the other. It's probably not a surprise, but spoiler, I like the manga better. That being said, there are definitely some moments that the anime does bring to another level. I am a huge fan of Chainsaw Man. I own all of the manga volumes that are available in English, and I felt super lucky because this was the first time that I read a manga before the anime adaptation was released. I can confidently say that I've never been as hyped for anything as I was for this anime ever since I saw the first trailer. I forced all of my friends to watch the show, and I have single-handedly kept every reaction channel afloat over the last few months, watching any upload I could find down to sub 100 view videos. So, as someone who has been obsessed with the anime and seen every episode dozens of times, and who read the manga series multiple times, I think I'm in a pretty good place to have this discussion. I've heard other content creators talk about people hating this anime, and I want to start off by just saying this. If you're legitimately complaining about this anime, you're probably the kind of person who treats the staff like shit when you go to a restaurant. You probably also look like one of these. We should all be down on our knees pleasuring Fujimoto for this amazing manga series, and we should stay down there and do the same for all the animators at MAPPA who put in the time and love into making this anime happen, especially considering the apparent lack of adequate wages and amount of crunch they had to deal with. With that being said, just because I think that the people complaining about this anime are ridiculous doesn't mean that the anime is beyond critique. I think that there is definitely room for discussion regarding the tone, some of the left out material, how some characters came across, etc. But at the end of the day, the anime was still amazing and none of my potential criticism here takes away from that. Now, let's get into the real topic of this video. I'll begin with the things that are the biggest difference between the two and that's the OP and EDs of the anime, and the little bite sized story at the end of the manga's first volume. Kickback by Kenshi Yonazu slaps harder than Will Smith at the Oscars, and the animation is brilliant. It's one of, if not my top, favorite openings. I know, I'm a little biased, but still. There are also a lot of little winks in the opening that will send manga readers into a PTSD fugue state. Anime onlys may as well be looking at a Jackson Pollock painting because they'll have no clue what any of this means. The fact that the anime has a different ED for every episode has been talked about a lot, but it's worth stating that it's just very special and that each one was fantastic. These has really helped to elevate the anime up and let you know just how much effort was put into this thing. Chainsaw Man follows Denji, a young boy who is struggling through the world alone, aside from his best friend, the chainsaw devil, Pochita. The story focuses on following Denji along his journey to discover what it means to be a human with goals and connections as he is basically starting from scratch as a young boy who was raised himself and knows very little about the world or about how to be a fulfilled person beyond his skewed adolescent dreaming. The first chapter of the manga and the first episode of the anime are very similar with a few moments that really stand out in the manga and a couple that the anime does improve. As the first volume of the manga consists of 8 chapters and doesn't even finish out episode 3, MAPPA really took their time with this first episode, laying out the background of Denji and Pochita. One really small thing that I like in the anime comes from the very first page of the manga. Denji is running down the list of body parts that he has sold off and refers to a ledger listing off his debts. In the manga, only the current debt is highlighted, but the anime shows off the whole ledger, giving you a denser history. You can see that he has been chipping away at this debt for a lot longer than the few body parts that he mentioned would make it seem. This is a small detail, but I thought it was a really nice touch. We then get a little backstory on why Denji owes money, and a heartbreaking scene of Denji meeting Pochita at his dad's funeral. Afterwards, we move on to Denji being betrayed by the Yakuza grandpa, who he owes the debt to. A small detail that's kind of interesting here is that the guy who stabs Denji and Pochita from behind doesn't really seem like he has been, become a zombie yet in the manga. I might be wrong, but he's definitely not as decrepit as he has shown in the anime. The rest of the scene is pretty much one to one until we get to Denji being stabbed and cut up. I love the simplicity and almost abstract nature of the scene in the manga, but it is definitely a lot more brutal in the anime where it is more drawn out. You feel each stab and are forced to listen to Denji's screams as he contemplates why he couldn't have something even so simple as a normal life. The following flashback is pretty much identical. We see the contract where Pochita offers Denji his heart in exchange for Denji making his dreams a reality. 
The parts of the scene where Dingy and Pochita's bodies are in the dumpster, the blood runs down into Pochita's mouth, and Dingy's body gets strung back together by the chainsaw chains, it was elevated by the anime. The motion of seeing the body parts gravitate back together really adds a lot here. Another small detail about this very next part is that in the manga, Dingy has tears in his eyes after realizing that Pochita is gone. It's subtle, but it displays Dingy showing emotion, which is relevant to the story. The rest of the scene with the zombie devil is a section where the manga really shines. I'm not a hater on the 3D animation, but there was just no way the anime was ever going to recreate this to the level that Fujimoto created it. There are so many amazing panels throughout this manga, but some of these would still place in my top especially the shot of Denji thrusting his chainsaw into the zombie devil's eye. This is such a unique layout and it just oozes with style. It's fucking sick. I know the subtitles vary between platforms, so I'm not really going to go into the translations a lot here, but I definitely like the wording in the manga versus anything I saw in the anime subtitles. For example, when Denji says, if I kill every last one of you, it's bye bye debt, gives more character than once you're all dead, I won't owe a damn thing. That's just my personal preference. This next scene where Makima shows up and finds Denji amongst the zombie corpses does have some pretty key differences. In the manga, Makima is cast in shadow, which gives us some dark and foreboding vibes, until Denji sees her face, which then she is cast in this almost holy light. In the anime, there's no toying with the tone, she just walks up. Given this is some of the best walking animation I've ever seen, and it still shows you some of her character, how confident she is that she would just walk up to this man covered in chainsaws like it's nothing. You also never see the faces of the two guys that are accompanying her in the manga, which also adds to the mystery of this public safety organization. We then get the car ride where Denji sets a record for falling in love speed run any percent. I've almost proposed to people just for telling me they like my shirt, so I can't really judge too much. This is where we get our first big discrepancy between the manga and anime. In the manga, it's all good vibes in the car, Denji falls in love, and that's about it. We don't get the useless dogs get euthanized bit, and she's treating me like a damn dog, I thought she was nice bit, until they're at the udon shop. Some man runs up to them yelling that a devil took his daughter into the woods, and Makima tells Denji that she doesn't want her noodles to get soggy, and so he needs to handle it. It's then that she tells him that she only needs dogs who say yes or woof. Dingy ventures into the woods to find the lost girl, and this is where we have our run-in with the muscle devil. I assume that Mappa left this out because weebs don't have muscles, and they wanted to avoid any unnecessary emotional trauma. Don't worry though, you'll be getting plenty of that later. Anyway, he finds the young girl who is protecting the devil, saying that her dad beats her and that the devil actually saved her. The situation reminds Denji of his relationship with Pochita, and he asks the girl and Devil if they want to run away together. The girl agrees, and we get this funny moment of the two laughing together while holding hands, and then Denji's arms just keep raising into the air until you're like, what the fuck? And we realize that the little devil that was with the girl is actually kind of a problem. Denji makes quick work of the muscle devil and brings the girl back though. He then anime cliches his way into Makima's tits and gets baited harder than a guest on to catch a predator. We then fast forward to Devil Hunter Tokyo HQ, where Denji starts to contemplate what working together with Makima could lead to. This is something I think the anime sort of misstepped on. I think the way they handled this makes Denji come across as a little more crazy than was intended. We're definitely disposed to think that Denji is a bit of a perv at this point in the story, but the dramatic nature of the elevator scene really adds up when combined with everything else. In the manga, it comes across as him just thinking about it, really wanting to do things with Makima, not emoting with his whole body like a weirdo. We then get to meet my boy Aki, and we get into the infamous scuffle between him and Denji. I think the anime handled this really well. The voice acting and sound effects add a lot here, the little like ding whenever the nut contact is made, but I love the sudden cut that happens in the manga. It's like a nut kick jump scare. We don't get the run up of Denji behind Aki, the manga just cuts to neon nut violence with no warning. We get Denji officially being added to Aki's team and learn that Denji will now be staying with him. This is when Denji demonstrates his home etiquette by being loud and generally inconsiderate like my upstairs neighbors. This part is a bit different between the manga and anime. In the manga, Denji actually sings a little union song instead of wah, 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 and there's no mountain of toilet paper or empty rolls like in the anime. The next big chunk is identical between the two mediums. 
Dingy learns what a fiend is and secures some sexiness. We then get back to the HQ where we are introduced to power. I definitely like her introduction in the manga more than her entrance in the anime. It just feels more like power to me and the panel layout is pretty dope. Uh, Dingy is a bit apprehensive, but she has boobs, so he gladly accepts her in the end. Afterwards, Dingy and Power are out on a patrol, and we get to hear some exposition about Power and some tips on how to handle police from Makima. In the anime, we just hear her voiceover, but in the manga, we actually get to see a panel of her next to the active scenes of Dingy and Power. Power smells blood and gives chase to the sea cucumber devil, and I will give this scene to the anime. The scene looks great in the manga, but it's just so well animated that I think it elevated it pretty well. Seeing the giant hammer manifest as she falls from the building looks amazing. We then get to see the repercussions of Power not being able to contain herself, and it's a pretty intimidating talk with Makima with a lot of sinister undertones. While the anime definitely shows that Power is having a bit of a freak out here, the manga nails her terror at the thought of disappointing Makima a little better. The following scene where we get the proposition of a fondle to Dingy in return for rescuing Miaoi is great in both and I can't really pick one over the other. They're both hilarious. Something that doesn't really directly translate from manga to anime is a stark contrast that is possible within the page. The instant change in Dingy's demeanor is really funny, but the way the anime just focuses on his hand crushing the can is equally effective. The rest of the first volume is adapted damn near identically. We get the train ride to the bad devil who is keeping Yaoi, there's a little philosophical discussion between Denji and Power, and a pretty iconic panel from the manga displaying the distance between the two. We get a meeting between Makima and the higher ups, and a discussion between her and Aki where we get a bit of explanation about a devil's strength and the fear surrounding them. The scene of Power attacking Denji out of nowhere is probably the most faithful part of the whole anime. I mean they animated this scene frame for frame from the manga panel so its accuracy is kind of wild. We then move into the house where we meet the Bat Devil, who heals his wounds off of Denji's devil-tainted blood and ends up eating Miaoi to get back at Power for it. We get the flashback of Power meeting Miaoi for the first time and Power empathizing with Denji before going down the hatch to be with Miaoi. The part of the scene where Denji is hanging onto the Bat Devil's leg is a bit more of a surprise in the manga because we don't get the heads up that he is there as we do in the anime. We just jump straight to him hanging on, screaming about titties. We get a short flashback to a time when Pochita was missing and a bit of Denji also empathizing with Power before going chainsaw and starting his fight with the Bat Devil. This part was definitely elevated by the anime. The panel in the manga that shows the chainsaw shooting out of Denji's forehead is intense but there's something so much more visceral about the animation. It really adds a lot. There's also the sick addition of the Bat Devil's hand just exploding and Denji vanishing like he's doing Katana Man special move. It's pretty sick shit. The last panel of the manga is a full two page shot of Denji charging at the bad devil and it's another one of my favorites. Thankfully this is a really faithful adaptation. There aren't many liberties taken with the story and you can tell that the MAPPA team has a lot of respect for Fujimoto's work. The main differences aside from the scenes and things I've pointed out in this video that makes a difference between the mediums is how grounded the anime feels. The world and characters of Chainsaw Man are batshit insane, but the way MAPPA animated this show somehow manages to bring all of these things back down to reality. I think this probably makes the show more accessible to a wider audience. It's like an HBO show cranked up to 100 and then turned into an anime. The manga has the same darkness and very real messages, but the lighter tone is able to push through when it's supposed to due to the medium in Fujimoto's art style. You can still feel that it's definitely a manga in a good way. I'd say that the realistic nature of the anime is also a good thing, I think that this difference between the two is actually perfect. First off, it would be damn near impossible to perfectly recreate the work of Fujimoto for obvious reasons, and also the point of the anime is to take advantage of that motion and timing that comes along with animation, the things that you don't have in a written story. It provides us with now two distinct but completely tied together ways of enjoying this amazing story, and I for one couldn't be happier. I'm planning on making videos dissecting the differences between the manga and anime for all of the content covered throughout the anime, so if you like this video be sure to check those out when I get them made. I want to thank anyone who watched this video for watching it and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just starting these types of videos so I'm experimenting with the format and how I go about it. If you did enjoy it please subscribe and leave a like. If not that's cool too, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.